20 minutes to answer some questions. So you can ask me medical questions for general medical education, and I'll do my best to try to answer them. general questions, and I can try to help you out with some general education. So, while well, I'm waiting for your general questions, I can try some sticky cheese. Because that's always fun, and very educational. In case that's something you'd like to learn about. Let's see. I think we've past rate already when we read this last time. We can talk about rhythm. So, this is what a normal rhythm looks like. This is a P weight. This little one right here. This is a QRS complex. And there's a T weight. P, Q, R, S, T. And there's the same space between each beat, right? And that's what a normal beat looks like. But, obviously, a rhythmist can happen, right? Hi there, second person. I see you. If you have any questions, general medical questions, you're welcome to ask. We're giving about 20 minutes of general medical education, and then we're going to head over and go do some mental health and some superhero stuff. So, varying rhythm, extra beats and skips, rapid rhythm, and heart blocks. Those are general categories of a rhythm. Let me know if this sound is okay. These are some varying rhythms. Sinus arrhythmia, that's when the main pacemaker of the heart isn't beating at the right rhythm. Sinus arrhythmia is what that is. Wandering pacemaker is when other parts of the heart are beating or are telling the heart how to beat. And then it's kind of all over the place. An atrial fibrillation. This is what sinus arrhythmia looks like. I hope you like tracing. I like tracing. So, P, Q, R, S, D. You see how there's this long space right here? So we have this, this long. So, in sinus arrhythmia, the pacemaker impulses originate in SA no. Because all the impulses originate in the SA note, all the waves look identical. They look like normal waves, but they're all differently spaced out. The pacemaking activity is quite irregular, and the pacemaker's impulses are sent out at varying impulses. Varying intervals, sorry. The PQRST waves of each cycle are usually normal and similar in size and shape. This is like the regular but the timing of the cycles is irregular. Wandering pacemaker is a varying rhythm caused by changing the position of the pacemaker. So in other words, normally, you're supposed to have, you know, the SA node is But here, you can see there's a bunch of little pacemakers that have decided they want to be the boss and tell the heart how to beat. So you have a varying rhythm, and the P wave shape changes. So here's one P wave that looks like that. There's another one that's like upside down, right? That's because with this one, the polarization is going away from the EKG lead. 
And this one has a funny shape, right? So you look at the P waves, and if they're different shapes, you might have a wandering pacemaker. And wandering pacemaker, the pacemaking activity wanders from focus to focus. The resulting rhythm is very irregular, and there's no consistent pattern or rhythm. The waves of the wandering pacemaker are of various shapes as the pacemaker activity changes location. I missed. <laughs> okay. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm answering general medical questions right now. So, as always, I'm a real physician, but anything that I say is not specific. Atrial fibrillation is this. There's no real P's, but multiple ectopic atrial spikes. Atrial fibrillation is caused by the firing of multiple foci in the atria. No single impulse depolarizes the atria completely, and only an occasional impulse gets through to the AV node. Atrial fibrillation is caused by multiple ectopic foci. So this is where it's not even things that are supposed to, take extra care of the heart that start firing. It's random cells that have started to grow there and decided they want to be in charge. Which constantly emit electrical impulses. So they don't have even a reasonable rhythm. They're just like, so they're not like boop, boop, boop. They're just like, ah, ah. And so then <laughs> the heart just like, oh my gosh, what, what would I do? And that's why it looks like this. You can kind of imagine it looks it looks a little bit like a scream, like <laughs> Since no single impulse depolarizes both atria, we cannot find any real P waves. This is always a totally irregular rhythm since only random impulses get to the AV node to initiate a QRS complex. The irregular ventricular responses may produce a rapid or slow rhythm. And this can be deadly. is a practice tracing. This tracing was monitored from a patient with a very irregular pulse. In this practice tracing, we notice an irregular rhythm, right, in which we can see discernible P waves, right? You see one there, there's one there. So we can rule out atrial fibrillation, right? The P waves are not identical, so we can say this is probably not sinus arrhythmia, right? So which one is this problem? Wandering pacemaker, right? I also find EKG tracings very beautiful. What a beautiful EKG tracing. It's actually not a very beautiful tracing because <laughs> this is not what it's supposed to look like. So, those were three kinds of sinus arrhythmia. So, let me know if you have any questions about. Beats may be recognized as waves which appeared earlier than expected. Skips refer to blank areas of baseline. So we can talk about extra beats and skips now. So here we can see a premature beat. Premature beats are caused by premature firing of various ectopic foci creating waves which appear earlier than usual in the cycle. The first four cycles here are normal, right? You can see that. There's a normal P wave, a QRS, a D, a P, QRS, a D, P, QRS, D. And this one too, they all come from the same spot. But then here, there's a little one that came early. You see how these are pretty much the same distance apart from each other? One, two. And then suddenly, there's an early beat here. And that early beat is coming from a different spot. 
Premature beets, like premature babies, appear earlier than expected. These premature beets generally originate from ectopic foci. They may be normal-looking waves or bizarre forms, but they all appear suddenly very early in the cycle. I don't like this sound right here. So, well, right now we're just doing questions and answers and some general medical information. And then we're going to move over for some mental health stuff over to Twitch. So that's what's up. But I'm going to turn off this fan. So. That was this, right? We talked about a whole premature beat. It looks like the fan sound turned off, so that's good. This is premature... Premature atrial stimulation from an atrial ectopic focus produces an abnormal P wave earlier than expected. Right? So, a premature atrial beat originates in an ectopic focus in an atrium and appears much earlier than a normal P wave should. So this is a kind of premature beat. It's the same as this. Because this impulse does not originate in the SA node, it will not appear like the other P waves in the same lead. See how that one is a slightly different shape? See that? This ectopic impulse depolarizes the atria in a manner similar to the normal impulse, so the AV node picks up and transmits the impulse just as if it were a normal P wave. So that's what that looks like. Premature nodal stimulation originates from a topic discharge in the AV node, so the impulse proceeds down the bundle branch pathway in the normal manner. The nodal premature stimulation originates in a focus in the AV node, which fires before the SA node begins a normal cycle. So I'll show you what we're talking about here. So there's your normal P wave from the SA node. This is a normal beat too. This is a normal beat too. But then, suddenly, you see how there's no P wave here? There's P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T. And then here we're missing a P, a P wave. We just suddenly have a Q, R, S. You see that? Therefore, one generally notices a normal Q, R, S, which appears very early and is generally not preceded by a P wave. Occasionally, this node of focus will send an impulse upward to stimulate the atria from below. It's called retrograde conduction. When it occurs, this backwards atrial depolarization may create an inverted P wave, which can appear just before or after the QRS, or this peculiar inverted P wave may be mixed in with the QRS complex. They don't have a picture felt, but it would be like a dip or something down here. So, you've learned three different Isn't that cool? We'll keep reading some of those at another time. I think we're going to go and move right into the mental health moment. So, <laughs> there's two of you, Marcus. There's you and one other person. But we're going to move over to Twitch. And we're going to do a mental health moment, I think. We're going to do progressive muscle relaxation exercise, if that's okay with you. I'll let you choose. Do you want to do progressive muscle relaxation, or do you want to do safe space visualization? I'm going to move over to Twitch to do that. There's more people on Twitch. But it was fun. We got to do a little bit of YouTube-specific EKG reading, which is always cool. Progressive muscle relaxation. Or, do you want to do safe space visualization? You can go ahead and choose, and then I'll move this right over to Twitch. If you don't choose, I'm going to choose, though. Alright, I'm going to choose. 
I'll see you over on Twitch. No, computer stuck.